Greetings in the Geek Rumors! We're back now with Infinity Watch Part 11! And today we're looking at Avengers Age of Ultron, okay? Yeah, with Guardians of the Galaxy 1, I did two sides of notes. Uh, as I was doing the video, I relied on it, not that much. Ah, uh, for this one, you've got two and a half size worth of notes, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna try and, uh, I'm gonna put these this way. You know what? Age of Ultron, to me, marks a low point. I thought Dark World was a low point. Thor Dark World, which was really not a favourite film of mine. It, it, they tried something different and it didn't work. Avengers Age of Ultron, and I hate to say this because I do love my MCU. I love the characters that are in the MCU. But Avengers Age of Ultron, to me, is not so much a film. It's more of a, uh, you know, let's have a look. We've got to set all this stuff up for the future films. It feels like a middle chapter. Not in a middle chapter as in Empire Strikes back or you know as just off the top of my head you know if you're telling a story you know the middle chapter should be a self-contained film this uh, avengers age of ultron feels like a load of set pieces characters we have to get into the film so we can still set something bigger like uh your uh civil war and of course the big one which we're leading up to avengers infinity war i mean okay you've got the controversy at the time of release where or even in pre-production where Joss Whedon was using Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who were X-Men characters as well. They were joint, and Marvel were able to get the rights to use them because they were joint Avengers and X-Men. So at the same time, you've got Brian Singer using Quicksilver in X-Men Days of Future Past. So in the same period, it's a year, you've got Days of Future Past showing their X-Men, or that, sorry, that Quicksilver, and you've got uh, Marvel for the MCU using uh, Quicksilver and his twin sister Scarlet Witch, but they can't say the word mutants, and they can't say the word, they can't say who the parentage is, because that goes into uh, X-Men territory, and, my, and Fox have the uh, rights to those characters. So you had all the controversy is going go to be, who is going to be the better uh, Quicksilver, and, you know, in the end, both Quicksilvers were good. I mean, I love Days of Future Past, fantastic film. And I also love, uh, I don't, I love each of Ultron as much as I love Days of Future Past. And I hate to say this because I am so pro MCU. And I love the, I love the way that they've constructed the story and the whole multi-universe multi uh, that they've created. But this just feels like set pieces. Scarlet Witch, uh, Vision, you know, it's, of course, uh, the the underused Quicksilver and his story arc, which I was very disappointed at the with, with uh, the conclusion to his arc. I mean, it was a waste. It was another character they could have brought forward. I hope you guys have all seen it. If not, switch the switch this video off and come back and watch it after you watch Age of Ultron. It's a, ne a necessary part of the whole story of the MCU, and it's, in, in the saga is a big thing. But as a standalone film, my God, it's weak. They tried to throw so much in, but it's set piece after set piece. I mean, uh, Andy Serkis is Ulysses Claw in just so that they could set up the character for Wakanda and you sing the Black Panther, which is good because you're cutting stuff out. So when we get to the Black Panther, hits the ground running, we already know who Claw is. We also know about Wakanda, about Vibranium, and you know, it's good in the sense that it is setting up future films. But having Tony Stark being the creator of this Ultron, you know, and of course the destruction Ultron leads to, and the Avengers lead to, which also bleeds into Civil War, and the breaking up of this team, which has been made bigger by the additions from Age of Ultron. But like I said, it just feels like set pieces. You've got, got right down to uh, the Incredible Hulk arc, and how he can end up in Ragnarok. I mean, it is set pieces just to set up a future th uh, thing. I mean, you can't do it with comic books. It, you know, they do do it in comic books, but on a grander scale for the MCU, you could argue that you needed Age of Ultron as this big setup for Phase 3, which, if you take it at the point of this just being these scenes that set up this thing, it, is, it works perfectly, but you're paying, you're talking people, asking people to pay money to go to the cinema to sit through it, and of course add it to their Blu-ray DVD collection, or download, so you really want people to pay for it that are actual collectors. So it is just set piece after set piece, this is all the things that's wrong, but even though they do that, it's still better than the entire output of the DCEU because they still retains the characters at their heart. 
So the characters save the film, but it's just the construction of the film. And I hate to say it's Joss Whedon. What he did for the MCU is absolutely fantastic. And I, this is no disrespect to him, although it does sound like this, but I just do not like this film. I, I really, I don't, I mean, and, and I do not like disrespecting a film in the MCU because I do love my MCU and I will try and find the positive in it, which is that it does set up perfectly and means you don't have, you cut all the fat so we can hit the ground running when it comes to your Thor Ragnarok and your Black Panther, especially. So for that sense, it's great. And of course, Civil War, it sets up the, the Sokovia Accord and why the Sokovia Accord came into place. So it is a great film as a setup, but it's just not a great film as a standalone film. But that being said, we're going on to Ant-Man next, so which will be coming up on our next Infinity Watch is Ant-Man. See you then.